Hey kids, I'm here to speak to you. I was wondering if you have seen the producers the current classic film turned mini wood within Broadway's magic musical. You should see it because it was the greatest musical on Broadway in a decade. Mel Brooks would call this film as one of the best and I sure agree it is. The composer of this film is undoubtedly one of the most underrated and sound Copy the music geniuses of the 20th century. Before Mark Sherman and Derry Newman, and after Henry Mancini, there was one and only the empire of comedy film music, John Morris. So, my fair kids, who is John Morris? And he's suggestions? Uh, well, I guess he is a self described aesthetic. He was a most extremely talented composer, arranger, conductor, the lyricist, the pianist and a Mel Brooks one hand man. Moore's affinity of music engaged at the age of three, when he sat down and spent his friends piano and started to play. Include him, he just never stopped. He continued to plan his studies throughout his childhood, most of which was spent in the small town of Independence in Kansas. He later returned to his course to attend the Gerard School. He began his musical career as a dance arranger for Broadway musicals and TV specials, including Pipe Dream, The Bells Are Winning, Bye Bye Birdie, and Corana. While working on Caesar's Your Show of Shows, he met the comedian Mel Brooks. The two men were called in to Dr. Sharpon Alley on Broadway, that was a kid and Eddie Albert. For the brief stab at writing a musical version of how Green Was My Fire, entitled Time for Singing, which folded after less than a month on Broadway in 1966, Morris was called in by Brooks to score one of the cod classic comedies of all time, which is famously known for a song, Speed Time for Hitler. The producers, Don Philip Montel and Gene Ryder, in 1968. This would prove to be the first of many hits for a pair who would go on to produce such modern classics as Blessing Saddles, Land Frankenstein, Stan Movie, which for all these reasons acquired over an hour and a half of musical material, High Authority, Space Balls, and one of the most powerful dramas of the 1980s, directed by David Lynch, and his favorite score, The Elephant Man. The Elephant Man remains his best work. He arranged his beautiful string sections in a fast and manner that he has a, a, a immediate impact on the film audience. It gave them a Cameo Award nomination for Best Visual Score in 1980. Around that time, it was quickly in demand. 1980, 1983, and 1987 were Hispanic years. But the rest of the decade, he scored two or three films per year. His combination with Gene Mother were another combination. From 1975 to 1986, he and Gene would work together on four films. There were The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, Mother Brother, The World's Greatest Lover, The Woman in Red, and Holiday Honeymoon. John has scored other films throughout his career in the 70s and 80s. Lil Beard, Q, In Laws. And with Johnny Dangerously and everyone's all time favorite, Dirty Dancing. Since the mid 1970s, John has been writing music for television. More surprisingly, he also even scored documentaries. In 1989, he swam to TV sitcom, providing the theme of hit Emmy Award winning Coach. It is unlimited of sex and won for nine grand bacon seasons. During the show one, his feature film output had begun to dry up. The last two films had dropped at the box office and his partnership with Mel Brooks was on the wax. He didn't score Robin Hood, Men in Tights and Dracula Dead and Lovely because of time the difficulties. So he and Mel had decided to go separate ways. With a chapter closed, John has focused his efforts on television since the early 1990s. 
as Pond came in 1994 with a groundbreaking Gone with the Wind miniseries sequel, Scarlet. And in 1999, the two murder mysteries featuring Gene Ryder as a bitter director turned detective, Larry Couch Carter. In 2002, he appeared on the behind the scenes documentary of producers, the movie. Within the next three years, he made a good progress with a newfound fans online, killing yours truly. I had a great pleasure to talk to him for the email, and he's a nice gentleman with a sense of humor. We've been doing this for four years now, and hopefully this will continue. In 2006, a special website, Battle of Life on MySpace, and a year later, Facebook. Its priority has been renewed with thanks to both websites. You may check me out on www.myspace.com for such John Moore's free music and add them as a friend. For YouTubers, add him now. Thank you for your time. I'll be appreciated. I'll send one of the YouTubers to, to New York to interview him at his home over the next several weeks. Stay tuned for that.